Welcome, everybody, to the Awake and Sober podcast, a podcast about life and recovery through Christ. Yeah, buddy. Hello, gentlemen. How are we doing this week? We are well, man. He got a little loud on that mic, didn't he? Hey, he had to because I turned up the music a little bit. <laughs> hmm. I was thinking because uh, he got a lesser mic than us. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> yeah, at least you can't hear me breathing during the intro. Uh. No, we hear you slurping. Sound like you smoking up. <laughs> Ain't nobody slurping over here, boss. Uh, yeah, I think he's talking about your broke down water bottle that you got. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was talking about. Uh, why do you think I drank before the show? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's going to make it rough. You can't really drink during it unless you take that no, lid off. No, man. No, yeah. Yeah, exactly what I'm going to do. I think it's time for a new water bottle. It's, a, it's officially, yeah. I might yeah. get one while we're on the show. There you go. Yeah. HR got like 10 of them in their office. I ain't trying to get another one. I'll break them every time. <laughs> we'll get you one from you dripping with a discount. That'll work. There you I'll go. Take yeah. I'll take it. They're pretty uh, They're pretty stout. They're mm. made well. Will they fall off a golf, a golf cart and continue to work? They're supposed to fall off a golf cart and continue to work. Yeah. Okay. All right. All They're right. supposed to take a beating. It's like a Timex. It takes a licking and keeps on ticking. <laughs> Perfect. Cool. So what's going on today? <laughs> oh, first off, tops. Oh, yeah. Shout out. It's been a couple minutes, a couple weeks. So uh, first off, we want to thank our sponsor, Tactile Turn. Um, Tactile Turn dot com. They make the finest writing utensils, flashlights, knives. Tactile turn, tactile they, knife. They, they, tactile they, they, knife, yeah. Tactile okay. knife. Didn't they say something about making a um a journal a pad? Yeah. Yeah. It hasn't come out yet. Um the journal covers that they have are made by Greg Stevens, GSD Designs. Yes. Okay. So those are pretty fired as well. I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. Also, we want to make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. We're on all podcast platforms. You see us on social media, give us a shout out, give us a share. We greatly appreciate it. Yeah, we do. Yes, we Without do. A doubt. So, how you doing, D? I'm doing well, my brother. Doing really well. Too good sometimes, I feel. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be that up honest, man. I mean, I get up in the morning and I'm thankful to be alive, without a doubt. You know, because everything I've been through in life, to be where I'm at today, I got to be, you know, great grace of God to be here. And I'm thankful for it. And that it just sometimes it seems to be a little too good to be true. But here I am. You just seem Killing like it. there's something there. Like he wants to say something, but mm -hmm. it just wasn't coming out. It, yeah, something like that. I don't know exactly what I was trying to say. <laughs> but no, I just want to, you know. It's that good. Okay, no, look, I'm going to be dead up honest. I didn't want to come out because I want to brag, but I actually hit a milestone in my in my exercises yesterday. 250 pounds, three reps. And I was really, really impressed with myself. And I actually was joking with the guys at, at work and shared it with them and they were just like, dude, you'll hit 300 by no, you know, and I'm just mm -hmm. like, well, I'm taking my time, but I hit it. And that's a big step for me. Yeah, that's huge, man. Yeah. Dang. I mean, once it would be one thing, but I got to do it three times. And I'm like, yeah. Three times a lady. <laughs> Jacked. <laughs> Jacked. <laughs> but um, just things are going really good right now, and I'm really happy where I'm at. Good. Good. And we got some new, sh I want to bring up the new shirts coming out. Okay. We should be having them by next by next podcast. We should be sporting the new shirts. Really? Yes. Right on. Because that's what they told me they wanted to have them for us by this weekend. So nice. Next podcast we'll have them. Well, so. then that means we better start dumping a couple of them out there real quick. Yeah, I think boom, it's a good boom, idea. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. I got one up there waiting. Yeah. So show notes hits it. We'll hit release because we could release it today. All right. And then um, I'll release another one right afterwards, and then we'll be caught up. Mm. Bang bang, yeah. So, but how you doing, man? It is well. It is well. I had fun last night. Yeah. Um, I don't think I have a have had a bad time at Celebrate Recovery, and I love testimony nights anyway. And then when it's your wife up there doing it, it makes it all the better, right? You know. So I got to sit there. I was behind uh, Steve and Crystal. Got to watch them react to to some of her story, right? Because mm -hmm. they've never heard her story. I've heard it. I never heard it the way that she wrote it this time, you know, so it's always good whenever they have rewrites and, and that. And, but yeah, I mean, other than that, it's been great. Uh, my soul is well. Worship was a lot of fun last night. Did you get wrecked again? <coughs> Negative. Negative. No wreck. You lying. <laughs> <laughs> I got completely wrecked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That last song did it to me. <clears throat> oh, it started on the first one for me. 
Oh, really? That yeah. was more of a still a hype song in mm-hmm. a way. That, that first one was okay, but I worship in a mosh pit. So when that type of music, that's my <laughs> worship music right there, buddy. Yeah, count them, man. Doubt. That was pretty good. Yeah. Somebody told me to to do it that we've been doing it on the weekends. And I don't remember ever hearing on a weekend, mm. but they've been playing it on a weekend. And okay. uh, yeah, it's the first time I heard it. I, it was awesome. I like that song. Yeah. So they, mm. our worship band plays that. I'm like, I wonder if I should have them play that next week for opener. Yeah. But I gave him permission to do all three songs. I just said, pick them. Cool. Pick whatever you want to do. We're teaching on sponsor. Here's what sponsor's about. Now pick the songs. And I was just curious what the, was, uh, what the education was going to be on. Nice. Yeah. You know what? Cool. Speaking of Celebrate Recovery, don't mean to cut. We'll get to you in a minute. But uh, the landing up there reading the stuffs last night. I, I, just, I love it, dude. You know, seeing them kids up there and pouring their hearts out, doing it. It's what's up, man. Yeah, and to get adults up there is really hard. Mm-hmm. So to get kids up there, yeah, I mean, 13 years old, well, getting ready to be 14, and the other one's, I think, only 15. Mm-hmm. So you had a 13-year-old and a 15-year-old up there reading steps, and <clears throat> it blows me away. It does. And, that, and I had to share about, you know, the landing. That's what we do, man, building disciples, and that's what it's about. You know, we make the joke that we try to put Celebrate Recovery out of business because get them taken care of when they're young, man. Mm-hmm. And, but yeah, it so was we got amazing. The materials old, ordered too, so oh, the sweet. materials will be here in the next few days. Um, probably be at the start of next week, knowing knowing them. But mm-hmm. we'll have them next week, and so that way we could have our meeting, get ready to launch the landing, like officially launch launch it. All right, with the materials. So I'm excited about it. Yeah, it's gonna be a good time. That is cool. Didn't think I was gonna go back that way, but you know, when the Lord put when the Lord put stuff like that on stage last night, I ain't got a choice, but. You know, because I've worked with both of those students, and it's been great to see where they at, and I'm so for it. Right on. Mikey. Hi. How are you? Can I talk, Derek? No. Okay. No, right. Derek's going to want to go back to the celebration place now. Let's talk more about Derek. <laughs> Let's really get it going. <laughs> we get it while they real little. <laughs> oh, man. Life is good. Life is good. I wasn't here last week. Uh, I think I wasn't here last week, right? He last. was not. No, no, I wasn't here last week. But uh, no, life uh, life's good, man. I'm gonna be uh, I'll be here this week. I should be here next week, and then a couple weeks I'm actually going to Tennessee. I'm really looking forward to that. What are you doing in Tennessee? Uh, so my family, we take a family trip every two years, as a as a as a whole. So me, my brothers, their families, my parents. Uh, this a uh, few years ago we went to uh, Gulf Shores. Two years ago we went to Colorado. And then this year we're going to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. I thought he was going to say he was going to corporate. <laughs> I might, I might stop by and say, "Hey, you need to hear about this Derek guy down there." No, they already heard. Uh huh. Mm. But uh, no, so uh, I, it you know it's actually funny because it's going to be my first vacation um, with with kids that are going to be kind of like in my care, and I'm really looking forward to it. Who's, uh, who's kids? I don't know, Katie's. but I'm about to call Katie. <laughs> huh? Katie's. Oh, Katie's going too. Yeah, she's going. She's bringing the girls. Yeah, so it's one of those things like you know, every vacation before, all I would do, I just go golfing because I had, I had no responsibilities. <laughs> it's awesome, but this time, uh, I we're gonna do a lot more, uh, be a lot more engaged with the family and you know, and doing a lot of stuff with the kids and whatnot. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, now, is he really looking forward to it? Or is he trying to talk himself into looking forward to it? I think he's trying to talk no, himself you know what? into I, it. I honestly, am, <laughs> and I, I, I'm, I am, I'm. I'm at that point in my life, I think, and in my in my faith and in my recovery, to where it's like I, I do look forward to those those times with, um, with the girls and and my my nieces and nephews, and it's it's a lot of fun because you know I was I was a very young uncle. Um, I was an uncle at 16. My brother had a kid at 21, 20, 21. Wow. So um, I always said you know that's the best birth control possible. I never wanted kids until now. It's kind of funny. Um, so now I, I have some and not, not mine, but you know, I, I, I love them like they're mine, but um, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it and I can't wait. And I think it's going to be a good time. So I told you Mike belonged at the kitty table. <laughs> hey, let me tell yeah. you, it's great to have them, but it's also great when they get a little bit older and you could go do your thing again mm-hmm. and not right. just have to concentrate only on yeah. that. But it's it's right. good to have a good a good mixture of both, yeah, without a doubt. And I like being an uncle because it's like, yeah, I'll play with them, but then they they leave with you. <laughs> even like even though I get a third when they get to be like thirteen and stuff, like with my daughter, she was going to the gym with me, mm-hmm. she was going to CR with me, going to church with me. 
So I was doing me, but she was right there with me, man. Yeah. So yeah. it was pretty fire. Yeah. Disc golf with you? Yeah, he disc golf. She threw further than you? I bet you she would have played some pickleball, too. Oh, I bet. <laughs> I bet if she gets her butt back here, she'll play. When she gets her butt back here. Yeah. Hey, speaking get, to Gotta existence. get her daddy on that court first. I got to see this. Yeah, you ain't worried about all that, man. <laughs> I'll smack that ball that up your nugget. Oh, we don't even know. But, um, yeah, life is good. I can't complain. I'm, I'm glad to be back. Um, I know Jeremy was here last week, so that's, I kind of missed that. But uh, Yeah, one day we'll get all four of us in this room again at the man, same time. Man, it's going to be awesome when we do. Count down. Jeremy, you only got three weeks left. This is what you told me. You got three weeks left of reprieve, and then baseball <clears> season's over. Really? So, yeah, he's coming back in pretty soon. I thought he said it was August. Three weeks ain't quite August. That's not, for sure. not quite. He probably gave himself a little, a couple more times, but you know. Yeah. You do. Well, what are we going to talk about today? When so we've been doing the steps this year, at the beginning of the year. We started talking about the steps and that, and we're getting ready to go into steps eleven and twelve. And I feel as we're going into those steps, those to me seem more of uh, servitude type steps that we need to go back into the um, maintenance steps and building up. You know the work and just do a quick review of what we've gone over so far this year on the steps. Yeah. I'd say 10, 11 and 12 are maintenance. Yeah. That's what I said. You said go back to the maintenance. You know what? You're probably right. But anyway, <laughs> I know, uh, 10, 11, 12, 10, definitely some maintenance. 12. I don't know how much maintenance that's all about going out. And, 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 the- and when, you know, it's kind of funny cause you're talking about sponsors next week at CR. It's like going out and spreading the word starting sponsorship yeah and that's why people sponsor because mm-hmm. it keeps you sober heck yeah it does keeps you out of your own way yeah. yeah out of your own head oh for sure i'm still waiting for my first one for your first sponsor sponsee sponsee he's already been to a couple of those two. i've been through two yeah, yeah. see a couple you're fired you're fired <laughs> that was a good that was a good show back in the day yeah what's that the Trump, apprentice? man the apprentice? yeah you're fired yeah, I used to love watching them fire people. <laughs> no remorse. You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> Go on. So step one. Yes. Stepping out of, well, for us, stepping out of denial, yeah. but. Mm-hmm. And re- recognizing that we are powerless and that our life has become unmanageable. Oh, my goodness. Coming to terms with the unmanageability. Right. How long did it take you to come to terms with that? I mean, like. Even though I admitted it when I got into recovery, I don't think I believed it yet. Uh, as soon as I wanted to kill myself, I knew my life was pretty unmanageable. So I knew it before I even went into treatment. I was like, I need something. I need help. And that's just me. Yeah, I wish I would have known. Because when I woke up in the hotel room still alive, I still thought I was manageable. Uh-huh. I'm like, and so as I look back, I'm like, man, I was really jacked up. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. I think the first time that I even thought about my, if my life was manageable, I needed a ride to work. And this is back when my sugar mama put me out of the house and I was still doing my thing. Splenda mama. Splenda mama. Splenda mama. That's what I meant to say. Love you, honey. But anyway, she had, you know, I wasn't living there. I needed a ride to work. And she's going to ask me, is, do you feel your life is unmanageable? And I'm like, no, I just need a freaking ride to work, man. Mm-hmm. You know, play this simple. Give me a ride to work. I'll be good. You don't even have a ride to work. You don't think your life is unmanageable? I'm not getting it. But I didn't pay, you know, I didn't let it really. But it was two weeks after that when she had truly came out and told me no about coming home that I ended up going back to CR. And I think it wasn't until I started my step study when I actually thought, wow, life has been unmanageable. Yeah. I really thought I had things together. And I've been in and out of recovery. I've been in and out of sobriety. And it was just like, I didn't think nothing of it. But dang, I'll be darned. I'll be darn. I'll be darn. <laughs> I'll be darn. I thought we weren't going to go that that country I, stuff. That today. wasn't man. That was a, that was just some Southern Illinois stuff. That's all. Uh, uh, okay. That's yeah. Southern Illinois. <laughs> uh, you know? Shout out to Southern Illinois. <laughs> I didn't know they ever went by that. <clears throat> they don't. He does though. They man. I had S I U E. I guess. Yeah, Southern Illinois. Yeah, but nobody else besides Edwardsville goes by Southern <laughs> Illinois. Carbondale. Carbondale. Everywhere else is East Side. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere else is we're just just the East Side. Yeah. But I was thinking a little more south than the East Side, like, you know, Monroe County and all that area down there. <laughs> Hillbillies. They do darn tootin' down there. They do. They, yeah, they do. They do. 
So step one, I am not God. Yep. Fact. Step two. We came to believe a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Yeah. He is God. There is a God. But he don't restore us to sanity too quick, I guess. <laughs> No, oh, look at us. <laughs> <laughs> We're still no, working towards that. I don't know if I am sane yet. Uh, man, uh, be so if, if I may, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight up. My friends will tell you. Yeah, it's uh, you ain't right. There is a God. Yeah, I would say six months is where I really started feeling mm. a little bit of sanity. I mean, you felt it beforehand, but just that fog was still so prevalent in my life. Yeah, uh, and it makes sense of why even like H and I hospitals and institutions wouldn't let you speak at a meeting, like if you're taking a meeting into a hospital, you couldn't speak at it until you're six months sober. Right. And I never understood why until I hit six months of sobriety. Mm -hmm. And then you couldn't take one in until you were a year in sobriety. And I'm like, why? And then at a year, I kind of realized why. Um, but it's every year after that that you get to see a little bit more and more sanity come back and more of that brain fog leave because there's some posts I made on Facebook that being that far into my recovery and even working for the church at the time, I'm like, what was I thinking posting that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think over a, about a 12 year span, we start getting our brain fully back. What are you on? You're 11? <laughs> 12. Okay. <laughs> 12. That's And so it's supposed to be kind of back to its healed state. I don't mean that you're going to be completely sane, obviously, no, no. but at least you have a healed state of a brain. Hopefully the holes are gone and all that stuff. I don't know. Going for an MRI might be kind of fun. Yeah. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Just wouldn't want to pay for it. Mm -mm. I don't want to do that. No. Oh. I got hired on four months into recovery. So I was still there. Oh, you know, I had makes sense. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but this month, you know, uh, what is today? The 19th, 10 days from now, I'm celebrating two years at the inebriary. So, um, yeah. so that cloud was still kind of there ish, you know? Yeah. Um, luckily I had shout out Christina teaching me at IOP and really put that, like that regimen into my, my program, you know, got a sponsor, started working the steps. I kind of came up in recovery in treatment as well. So it was very hard for me at first to separate the two, yep. you know, working in, re working in treatment, living in recovery was very hard at first, you know, because I had that, you know, we, and we all have that kind of sometimes that savior complex. Like I'm, I'm, I want to help everybody. Right. And sometimes My way I works. Can't. So hear what I have to say. Yeah. Right. And I, and I, and I resent people that say that now to a, to a certain extent, like this is the only way it's like, no man, it's a hundred ways you can do it. There's a lot of ways. Yeah. So luckily I got, I found out very soon that I had to work in treatment and live in recovery. I couldn't mix the two, you know, it took me at that took me about five, six months. So around, around a year. Yeah. Working in or working. Yeah. We did a podcast about that. We did. We did. Not that long ago. You guys did. Yeah. <clears throat> no, that that was, was you. That was quite a long time ago. No, no, it was before me. Was it really that far back? Yeah. We were in Jeremy's basement, I believe. Yeah. Oh, oh, Wow. Yeah, so that was a while ago, and I thought for some reason we already celebrated your two years, but I, that must have been 18 His months. His two-year so sobriety. Two-year sobriety was in February. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. But so he's two years at the aviary. Two years at the aviary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, June 29th, because my, my interview <laughs> was last year, this time a couple a couple weeks ago, hmm. that, that, uh, Her that uh, Hill Jack House tournament I played in, then I came straight to the interview. So that was two weeks ago. Hmm. Look at that, man. A couple of them panned out. The four month hires, mm -hmm. the right after they get out hired, it don't, yeah. they don't pan out often. Hey, no. come on, man. I started my recovery. I was on papers and I was still on papers when I went to work at a church. Yeah. Right. So, you know, give you guys, I give you guys a little bit of grace, not a hundred percent, but a little bit. I appreciate that. <laughs> but well, I'll take it. I'll take whatever I get. It, it's good to see two of them work out. Yeah. Right. Him and Germ. Mm -hmm. Because that, that ends up being a bad failure for a lot of people. Going to work in, in recovery right away. I mean, they, they have not even 60 days of sobriety sometimes, and they all of a sudden have a job Yeah, working at the treatment center. And it's like, man, we're, we're playing with fire because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we don't want something to happen to them. And these two have panned out. I think probably the only two that have. Uh, I, put, I throw Casey in there. He's coming up on a couple of years. 
Right, but I would I would say there's been two that has panned out from start to finish from so start, far. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, um, we luckily, you know, and I and I owe a lot to um, Matt as well taking a chance on me and Jeremy because he told Jeremy he told Jeremy straight up to his face, "I'm not going to hire you." <clears throat> and then I think like it was like maybe a couple weeks later, want to have you come on? He called me. I'm in Colorado with my family up four years ago or two years ago. Hey, I need you, I need you to come back and work. So him taking a chance on us that really solidified like, yo, what I'm doing in recovery is what I need to be doing for my life, you know, working in it, but also living in it. So that chance without that chance, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be here. And you just got to make sure that you still work your recovery. hundred percent. If not, you're screwed. Yep. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yep. We were talking about clean time and stuff, man. My six years coming up real soon. Already? It was like two days ago was 71 months. Wow. That's what I said. Wow. Wait, hold on. You yeah. 28 days until your six years? Mm-hmm. Darn. What are we going to do? Party? No. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to celebrate my recovery. <laughs> At Celebrate Recovery. At Celebrate At Recovery. All right, then. Yeah. Better make sure I got a six-year chip, huh? Yeah. yeah. That's kind of giving you, a, you know, a few days ahead of the no, so Little we got it. Up. Yeah. I need to order an eight-year, and I need to order a six-year. Yeah, my wife's real proud of me. I bet. She was just like, dude, I mean, she got her time in, too, but she's just like, wow, six years. I'm like, yeah, I'm creeping up on it. I'm going to see it because, <laughs> you know, I'm— Back to what we're talking about, the steps. You know, I do my best to try to work the steps as much as possible, and it's got me this far. And I try to tell some of these knuckleheads at work, look, I'm not saying I'm better at you in recovery. I'm just saying this is where I'm at, and these are the things that I've done to get here. Well, you ain't got nothing to lose. Give them a shot. You're here for 30 days. Try it out, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a good start. A quick 30 days, a good start. Yeah. Absolutely. So... You get out and get you a key tag. Yeah. No, they bring actually bring them in. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They do. <laughs> they get those 630 meetings, man. People bring them tags in. Mm-hmm. So we came to believe a power greater than ourselves. Step three. Next three. Make yeah. a decision to turn our will and our lives or our lives, lives and, and our wills, wills. Over, over to the care of God or over to the care of God as you understood him. Yeah, care of God. Care like of God. I love Jesus. I'm being, I'm, I'm being, uh, uh, Devil's advocate over here. For no, I'm, I'm, being, I'm being very democratic. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Politically correct. Not like that. Not like that. I'm Not sorry. like that. <laughs> or I need God. I need God. I'm not God. There is a God. I need God. I love the first three. Mm. Yeah. The way I had it was I can't, he can, so I let him. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. That's Always like, easy to remember. Yep. And it's very simple. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not God. There is a God. I need God. Pretty easy. Mm-hmm. I needed it simple at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I really think, though, when it, you would say, we say that it's simple, but when it comes to that, actually just saying that I need God, mm-hmm. that could be one of the harder steps you can think about because a lot of people just don't want to give. That's what's stopping them, really, I feel a lot of times when they recover. You know, they not putting any forth any spiritual practices or whatnot and not finding a God, even if it is of their own understanding. And they're a lot of times they... You know, they admit they drink to cover up a situation that's going on in their life. But they ain't willing to give that situation that's going on, that went on in their life over to God. Because mm. they're, because, well, really, what I got from one character is they're blaming God. Yeah. You know, they're not denying the fact he exists. They just come out and say they don't like it. You know, they're not going to give themselves over to someone that took something from them as they feel. Right. You they know, they got a right to feel that way. No, without a doubt. And I'm not, I won't argue with them. But that's why I think so many people get stuck on a fourth step, too, is because they didn't really work a third step yet. Right. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. They don't have a higher power. You can't, you're not going to make it through a fourth step without a higher power. You're just not. So that third step is just vitally important. So more or less to say when you go, you know, that's what makes the fourth step pretty or ugly is how you work step three. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't have a higher power, you're, you're just not going to get through it. No. I've seen people stuck on it two years, three years. And didn't drink, but nothing else Simply changed. Simply not surrendering. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. 
one of my old sponsee brothers was that way. Then one of them, he ended up using the other one that was that way. But it's so easy to do if you're not going to admit that there's a God and that you need God, you're, you're pretty much done. I mean, until you can find something greater than you. Well, early on, nothing is greater than you. At least that's what we thought. <laughs> look, look, and then we I, realized what, it was but, unmanageable. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah, you know, I, 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 I was that guy that early on in recovery, I called myself God. I'm doing the work. Mm -hmm. I'm the one putting all this work in, blah, 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 blah. Luckily, I had a good sponsor. He cut that out really quick. Um, and I love you. Shout out, John. Um, <laughs> Way to go, John. Way to go. Yeah. John, uh, he's a good man. Good man. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I thought it was all powerful. I was doing the work. I had the control until I started. And that was before I started working a step program. It really right. was. Yeah. I like that you brought that up. At first you thought you were God. And then when we first interviewed you, those rooms, those meetings was your higher power. Yeah. And now you come to recognize Christ as your higher power. hundred percent. So, you know, where you start at, you know, isn't where you end. It doesn't it's, have it's to be. Not, it doesn't have to be. And hopefully everybody wises up and comes to find out that, yeah, this is the way to go. But right. at the same time, finding that higher power, practicing them spirit, that spirituality, working towards, you know, there's something greater than yourself. I just think Jeremy says it be best when he talks about you woke up in the morning, you had something drove you to go and drink. A power greater than yourself seemingly took over and made you go drink. Mm hmm. If there's a power greater than yourself that's going to drive you to do that, don't you think there's one greater than yourself to take you away from it? Amen. A lot of people get afraid of religion, I think, too. It's, yeah. It is. It, it is. And I'm not speaking religion. I'm speaking spirituality. Right. You yeah. know, and that's what I like to get people. But to when they hear God, they think religion. Mm. Buddies, do they ever. That's what I did. That's what, And <laughs> that's mean, why I didn't join right away. Yeah. You know, that's why I made it the rooms, because I was not, I, I was lost in my faith, you know? Yeah. I, right. When I first tried to get just clean off of alcohol, not realizing that all the other things were a problem too, but I quit drinking. <laughs> a little harm reduction. Yeah. <laughs> Before it was called harm reduction, I guess. <laughs> right. Um, and so I quit drinking, but I, I was still doing other stupid stuff, right? Yeah. I just could not hear the word God. Anytime I heard God, it made me cringe. I just didn't want anything to do with it. And this is from somebody who you were a believer. No, not then. Not then? No, this would have been 2000 and... Let's call it 2010. Um, early on in my trying to to dip my toes in. Yeah, okay. okay. And figure it out. And then when I realized how jacked up I was, I didn't I didn't want to, I did not want to believe. I knew yeah. I, I needed to believe, but I didn't want to believe. Like mm -hmm. the God thing really, really pushed me. It really pushed me. And um, I think I finally allowed it to break me and come to that point but it, it took a while i didn't even want to hear god i didn't even want to hear god of your understanding amen yeah i hear that yeah and i just want to mention man that i've heard some complaints about certain we get you know we are all believers in this room you know and, and this is a christ-centered podcast right in the beginning of recovery you know if you may not see it as god you know a lot of these a lot of what i've just come to notice is that a lot of these individuals that i work with and stuff they don't want to hear about god Right. You know, and we get these some some individuals that are sho almost shoving it down their throats. And they're just like, dude, I'm not going to AA meeting. If that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. And how many AA, you know, I go been to a couple and it's not shoved in, down the throats. You know, like one of my clients, one of the things he loves so much about me is the fact that I am who I am as an individual. I have my higher power, but I'm not choking him with it. You know, but I try to show him, you know, through my actions and what I do how it works and mm -hmm. stuff. But and he should have said, the one thing I like about you is you're not shoving it down my throat. We got these guys coming in here for these meetings and they're shoving it down our throats. Nobody wants to do nothing to that. Yeah. Are they really shoving it down the throat or does it just seem that way because they're where I was and you just don't even want to hear it once? Well, that that too. Let yeah, alone. I, I, honestly, I would say it's a little bit of both. Yeah. For real. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been one of those night meetings in a while, but when I was, when I was, um, and when I was, I'm the only person here that was a client there. So, um, it was, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of times I was like, what are you talking about, man? I don't want to hear this. Like, just stop, please. But at the same time, it was from my upbringing, raised Catholic, you know, fell out of faith, had a real resentment towards the church and all that stuff. Right. Um, so I didn't, I had not, I didn't want anything to do with it similar. Right. Yeah. And then 
it took me to have an open mind for the first time in my life, really like truly open mind to where I could say, okay, if there is a God, he's helping these people. I'm not that special. He won't help me. And so I finally started to take a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and slowly that faith started coming back. I would say if we love people well, they'll understand it anyway. Yeah. It don't hurt to say you, you got to have a higher power. Whatever it is, it is for you, but you got to mm-hmm. have something. Yeah. But we don't have to beat it down their throats, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell it again. I like to hit people with the Bible just <laughs> just to do it, just to mess with them when they come into CR like if they're not believers. Mm-hmm. I'll just go up and thump them in the head. You know, just going to beat you over the head with the Bible. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, just, and that's what it does. It gets a laugh out of them and, and it, it tears down a wall. 100%. Because I don't want to shove it down your throat to where we push you away. I just want you to be here. Mm-hmm. I don't care what you believe in in, the moment, in this moment. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict. It's our job to love you. Yep. Mm-hmm. I don't have to do anything else but love you. If I love you well, the Holy Spirit's going to do what the Holy Spirit needs to do, and you'll get wrecked. We love you till you love yourself, right? Straight up. Yeah. Yep. I tell that to clients all the time. It's like, I don't care what you believe in. I believe that you believe in, and I just want you to believe in something. Yep. <clears throat> That's it. Just believe in something, man. Believe in something. There's something great in you what out there. Exactly. It doesn't Find matter what it is. Find your higher power. Yeah. Hold on to it. So if you're new out there, just get something for a higher power. Whatever mm-hmm. it is now, it it just it don't matter. It's just something greater than you. Yeah, I still battle the whole doorknob thing, but I ain't gonna talk about that. <laughs> I, I was just about to say, don't let it be a doorknob. I mean, I maybe st- even I still if it never was. heard it in a room. I yeah. just heard people talk about it. I, I, it's one of those. Like, I don't think it was ever. <laughs> I mean, maybe it was at one time. At, at I one time, it. it's like one of those. Uh, one of those, uh, like you know, horror stories you yeah. hear, or like uh, like a legend uh, yep. in the rooms or something like that. Yeah, I heard a guy tell me one time his higher power was his cat. Died three days after he named it. <laughs> <It's> like really, <laughs> you didn't find another higher power, buddy. He went and adopted another cat. I don't know, but <laughs> seeing that. That to me is just somebody wanting to play around. I, I hope. Um, I've heard of people doing nature and, and different things like that, which I get, but nature's God. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. good. I'm glad it's nature. When people tell me that, I'm like, you, you know who created that, right? <laughs> I don't say that, but I'm thinking that, my that, Yeah, that's what you want to say to them. Yeah. Yep, yep. God created that. So cool. Yeah. You believe in God. It's all right. You'll get there. Yep. Mm-hmm. So that goes into us, and we're talking about that, you know, the fear of like uh, fear of God or whatnot. Um, it leads us right into step four. Made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Mm. That scary, scary woo Man, step. no, like, like go back to what we just said. If you have not truly worked step three, yeah, it could be scary. Yeah. But if you truly work step three, you truly have that higher power to walk with you through that fourth step, dude, it is awesome. It is definitely freeing. Mm-hmm. And I, I shared that last week when I, in my teaching, you know, it's one of the most freeing um, steps there is. And I get it when people are saying it's bad, but now, but today, that was today's year old when I come to realize that you got to properly work step three in order to work step four. Cause if not, it will be ugly. Yeah. But if you do, if you truly accept a God as your higher power and work it, he's going to be right there with you. Mm-hmm. It ain't so scary anymore. No. And you know? the only thing it does is gives you answers. Right. And we we're why people, Ever since we were a kid, why, 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 why? why? No, well, you're you why. Why? Here it is. It's, it's right here, right in front of you. Right. It's like right. God take you on a journey. Yep. The roadmap of recovery. Step four. And roadmap start. to at least us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> untangling that mess because that roadmap that you brought was hard to read because there's a tangled mess across there. But it's yeah. true. It's a roadmap. I mean, mm-hmm. had a bunch of them, dead ends and stuff on that roadmap. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but mine didn't look too good. Was that, was that uh game shoots and ladders? Oh my goodness. <laughs> this was like, Oh, I guess I got to go back to the top. I don't know. It was, down. it was sorry. I get so far. <laughs> and something hit me and I fall back. <laughs> Part cheesy. All of them did that. All that stuff. <laughs> They really Matter knew what they fact, were doing. Thanks, Hasbro. <laughs> yeah, uh, JD. Milton asked, Bradley. <laughs> oh, Milton Bradley. Yeah, excuse me. excuse me. We're over at mom's house, and she had a game of Parcheesi over there. He picks it up, and he could barely even read what it said. He's like, "What is this?" <laughs> Parcheesi. Like, it's Parcheesi. Yeah. yeah, we could play some of that. Yeah, <laughs> old absolutely. school easy game. So step four, definitely not a scary step. Nope. Once you have God, 
Honestly, I feel that step five could be a more challenging step than step four. Why? Because now you're actually sharing it with someone you trust. Admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. And here we we three men sitting in this room, and I could tell by looking at each and every one of us, we weren't ones that just want to open up to some other dude no. about anything. No, and and I always give him credit for this too, though. Like the way Mike shared his first time ever in front of me, because I, I I don't think we ever said more than ten words to each other, if that, before the day that he shared his impact statement with me outside with him. It was me, him, and Christina. And I'm like, man, that's bravery for for somebody. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't know me at all. And so someone you trust, at least you know him. Mm -hmm. Heck, Mike's out here sharing an impact statement. He knew nothing, nothing about me at all. And I, I, tr I knew I trusted Christina, and I knew that if I had enough trust in her, she wouldn't put me in a situation that would... Uh, you know, deteriorate the, the experience yeah. or, you know, just, uh, it, it wasn't going to be a detriment. So, but that was raw vulnerability. That's, yeah. that's something you don't see, especially out of men. Exactly. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's yeah, why so. I feel step five could be a little scarier than step four. Yeah. Step four, it's on a piece of paper, but then we got to go share it with somebody. Yeah. Speak that mm -hmm. stuff out loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, say sharing it with myself and sharing it with God, that's one thing, but somebody I barely know. Right, it's funny. It says somebody you trust, but yeah, how long have you really known them? By the time that you usually work a fifth step, that's, I'm thinking that's about a month, five, six into the recovery. Yeah, I was gonna say five to six the months, steps, seven, maybe. You know, maybe. and you but maybe and you met this guy. And you talk to him once a week when you call him or yeah, meet up with him, whatever. However, your sponsor thing works. Mm -hmm. You ain't made no buddies, you know, because your sponsor's not supposed to be your friend, as you know, in the beginning. I mean, you could build a friendship over the period of time, but in the beginning, we don't pick friends in that. Mm -hmm. So you really don't know this dude from Adam. I did, but just... yeah, a lot of times you don't. You might have just picked him up a month before. I don't right. recommend it, but I did. I, I've known the guy. I knew the guy for years. Yeah, you know? I remember that story. Yeah, yeah. But that's what you needed for you then at that mm -hmm. time. And and honestly, man, like when I when I I I would prefer telling a stranger things about myself. I never told anybody else as opposed to telling a friend. Yeah. You know, Good. because a friend hard to be so hard to be objective. Friends already have a preconceived notion of what was going on or they knew somebody that was involved, blah, blah, blah. A stranger is completely objective. That's he's just looking at facts. Should be. I think, I think also telling somebody that you know, is you're going to still continue that relationship with them. Right. Yeah. And so then how, how are they going to look at you afterwards? Yeah. Are they going to judge you? And most friends, most of my old friends would have judged without a doubt. So it, it and it's, it's really hard for people not to judge now, even, even in the positions that all of us are in, we could judge so easily and take sides one way or the other Absolutely. so quickly. Mm -hmm. And so finding somebody that you're going to really trust is important. Yeah. I guess if you thought about it that way, going into it, all right, I'm going to share some of my most deepest secrets with this person. <laughs> Who do I really want to tell this to? Mm -hmm. We might start being a little bit more selective with our sponsors, even. Hundred <laughs> percent. You think? Maybe we'll interview them instead. Yeah. Right. And I mean, and I, like, uh, so just back to me telling you know you and Christina, it took me two more years to tell my mom. Oh who, wow! Who was like my number one confidant and biggest supporter? It took me two more years to to tell her what I told you and Christina and have discussed with you guys multiple times. Right. So it's like, even then it was terrifying. Oh yeah. You know, because hard to be objective. So luckily she's already working a program. So she took it as somebody working a program would. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. Tell my mom some of those deep, dark secrets like that. I don't know if I could, I don't know if I could do it. I was tired of holding on to it. Right. I really was. Uh, I don't think I could. Right. That's what I'm saying. So I, I give him credit. He, yeah. He he was willing to get vulnerable out there in front of me, willing to get vulnerable with mom. That's huge. I'm thinking my mom's upstairs right now. We just moved her in. Mm -hmm. I don't think I could tell her that kind of stuff. <laughs> I, so I've shared on the podcast and I've shared with you guys, you know, I had that situation with my father and my mother and the way he treated her. Like, hey, am I going to go to my mom and say how weak I felt when dad did that? You know, I just, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't find myself doing it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know. I mean, she's going to look at me like, you know, you weak. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, 
Yeah. I couldn't do it. Let's hopefully nobody's getting scared of sharing a fist up now because it's the most freeing experience that you could have. Oh, no, yeah. It's, it's, it once so it's good. out, it's out, yeah. man. It's so nice. Because you wrote it, which got it out of this, mm -hmm. and then you spoke it, which got gets it out, rid out of it. But to get it out of here, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it yeah. is so freeing to do, but find you the right person. Yeah. Find you the person you trust that you know is not going to, and most people in recovery aren't going to judge you too harshly anyway because theirs is exactly the same. Right. You yeah. know, they, they've been, they've done the same exact things that you did. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're your sponsor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Leading you down that path. Yeah. Um, step six. Step six. We were in, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So we talked about. I thought it was a the list though. And then seven, we gave them up. No. Well, we're still entirely ready. We're yeah, entirely ready. And then seven. We asked. asked. Yeah, we asked him to remove. Oh, okay. So four is our identifier. Five is our kind Get of roadmap. Rubber. Yep. And yep. then six is our identifier again. Our ident take these. Yeah. yeah. Take them. Seven is take them. Seven is take them. Yeah. But six is we're ready. Hey, show me what they are. Yeah. I'm ready to. I'm ready to see them. I'm ready to receive this bad news because you already showed me what they were in step four in that column, and so I'm ready. Back to that roadmap. I'm Man, ready to get a roadmap to, to your character defects. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for you to take this crap from me. <laughs> and then step seven is take it. Humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. Yeah. Humbly. I love how it says humbly asked. It's not take these. It's, right. Please take these from me. And fill me with. Yeah. And I think they should add that to that step. Take these, fill me with something better. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right, yeah. Give me some assets to take with me. Huh? Yeah, fill me with your Holy Spirit so yeah. that way I'm full of assets. Right. And that's that's what it boils down to because we have to replace those bad habits. And some of the bad habits is just finding something to do again, right? So what do we do? Wednesday nights, we go play pickleball. Mm -hmm. Replacing one bad habit of doing nothing with doing something good for yourself. And so you gotta you gotta find a way to replace all those character defects with character assets. They're still trying to get me to go play pickleball. <laughs> We're gonna get him out there one day. One, one day. day you're going. You're going. Yeah. As soon as you hit three hundred, get you out there. <laughs> Maybe two. Seconds. And weight or pushing. No, we're going to get him out. Is he? <laughs> I've done hit that weight one time. I ain't doing that again. <laughs> that took me a second. I see what you did. <laughs> yeah. So pushing weight or weight, weight. Yeah, right, right, right. And we're talking about actual weights at a gym. Got, for all those gangsters out there uh, talking about pushing yeah, weight. We ain't talking about moving any weight, y'all. <laughs> I don't think they'd be listening to our podcast. But <laughs> you never know. Wait, I got family members that listen to this podcast. So, you know. So, you know. <laughs> Still pushing weight, huh? They may be. I don't speak to them much, but they may be. You never know. Uh, so assets, how important are they? Very important. Because you got to fill up, fill those holes or those defects you just let God take away. Mm -hmm. if humbly. Not, humbly. 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 Humbly ask. That's like crumbly. Crumbly. Humbly ask them to take them away. Look, come on, how many these character defects that we had that we want to hold on to, though? Ooh. Pride. Anger. I know I've had a few. I don't want to say all anger because we get anger over angry over different things. Dishonesty. There was some things, some things I was angry about. I wasn't ready to let go of jealousy. For me to humbly come up and like, dude, take this away. That took a lot. Took a couple years. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Some of them make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside, though. They do too. They're, they're kind of fun to hold on to for a little while. Control makes me nice and warm and <laughs> what really got me going like on the rid anger of them, thing is i started i got sick and tired of getting angry over the stupidest things i could think of straight up yeah the lady in the um shopping carts and stopped in the middle of the aisle at walmart the dude that pulled out in front of me on the highway i was getting upset over that for no reason because i truly wasn't mad at that person mm -hmm. but i wasn't being humble on step seven I wasn't giving up all those little character defects. Why so. do you say you weren't mad at him? I'm always mad if someone jumps in front I said, of me. I ain't got no reason to be mad at him. Yeah, I just want him out of my way. He didn't wreck my car. He, all he did was cut me off, man. You know, he gone now. <laughs> no, that's the problem. Is Most of the time, they're not gone. Oh, they I, pull out yeah. in front of you, and they're still there. I guess when you're only going 20 miles an hour. Yeah, hey, you know what? Gone. Hey. Most of the time, I get up next to him and just... See, that's that character defect. That's man. I don't know when I'll be able to let that go. That's when I, I, I hold it. 
this, 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 this the thing. Are you mad at Are you yeah. mad at that situation, or is there something else you're holding on to? Nah, I think I'm mad at that situation. You're okay. going out in front of me. You're stopping me from going fast. Mm-hmm. And I like to go. I don't like to drive. And right now, that's all I'm doing is driving. I hate driving. <laughs> all right. Yeah, you're in a you're in a tough spot there. Yeah, I <laughs> I hate driving, and I'm driving a lot at the moment. But I don't. I, that's why I like to drive 120. I like to get to where I'm going real quick. <laughs> Whatever you got to say to justify, bro. <laughs> However you got to do it. I, I like to roll. <laughs> Whatever you got to say, man. I mean, I got yelled at by your wife for rolling with you in the car. Dude, we ever tell you about that? No. I'm going to share this real quick. So we're headed out, we're headed out to um, New Melody to go play some disc golf. He just got his new ride. It's got turbo. Mazda. It wasn't mine yet. Was it the Mazda? We, yeah, yeah, the Mazda 3 with uh, turbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it he was had, a test drive. <laughs> Of course it was. Hit the back road, open it up, right? Why not? Man, yeah, try to explain that to my wife. <laughs> was why she with you? How'd you? Because I had I had the light three sixty going on, and she yelling at me, telling me, "Why are you doing three hundred? Why are you doing ninety miles an hour in our vehicle?" I'm not in our vehicle, but I'm riding with Shane. And it was the back roads. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> we weren't on a highway. At the if time. you know anything about New Melly, they're not straight. <laughs> no, no, but that car gripped. It did too. When it <laughs> rolled. But, That's uh, awesome. Yeah. See, so, I like to go fast. Yeah. It has nothing to do with anything else. Step eight, we made a list of persons we have harmed and became willing to make an amends to them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a challenging one. Because there's some... But Once again, was, another list. Yeah. All these lists. All this writing. Writing. What do you use to write with? Tactile turn pen. Tactile or turn pencil. pens or pencils. See, I work steps and pencils. Well, I work steps with my sponsees with the pencil. I write in my pen, but I do all the the notes and things for my sponsees and pencil. Right on. So, got to have a pencil. Got to have a pencil. Get you a pencil, tactileturn.com. Yeah, but. And a notebook. Yeah, get a big one, though. Get a big one. For eighth and ninth, for your eighth and ninth step, get a big one. Yeah. As a matter of fact, just get the big loose leaf paper and put it in a three ring binder. There you go. That that's, works better. It's ideal. You yeah. know, so you get a five subject notebook, man. You got four. You got the first two for your step four. Then you got the next one for step six. And then you got for next one's step eight. <laughs> it's got sections. Yeah. So you, <laughs> I guess if you didn't do a lot wrong, those work for that many steps. <laughs> but when you did a lot wrong, you might as well yeah. get a bunch of loose leaf paper and put dividers in them then. <laughs> True story. With a three inch binder. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Not the, the one dog. inch. The big dog. Yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, just, yeah, get paper and get ready to write because making that list, uh, the good thing is, is our lists were already made for us. Step four made the list for st- step six and seven and eight and nine. Mm-hmm. So that's, that four step, if done thoroughly, if you did a true moral inventory, an honest, thorough inventory, your list for six and your list for uh, eight are pretty right. much done. Right. You might have a couple creep in there that you didn't put down there on, on your four step. Well, that's just the thing. Two, yeah. When you do the four step, you recognize your character defects. And as you're giving them up, you recognize where those character defects went wrong. And you didn't recognize that till you got to eight. All right. The situation that happened over here with my parents had me full of anger and a hatred towards women. But that, you know, I didn't recognize that character defect, the action that it had until I got into eight when I had to make amends to my ex. Right. Then you got to go back and work another four step on it and just write the rest of it out. There's a lot of writing for a long time on a four step. Was that you getting sick? We're not going to talk about this situation because you don't know who's listening. But (laughs) Yeah, it's uh, that's fair. (laughs) <laughs> so step eight making that list mm-hmm. and so, honestly how how much writing did you do in step eight and nine because did you write out your men's or did you just speak first your time men's? first time spoken and we talked about this a few weeks ago when we did eight and nine uh i did a lot of living amends a lot of because you know we talked about what if those people are out of your life uh, right what you know how do you go about you know what if they're dead or deceased or you know they're off living their own life now. Right. Um, so my first one I did spoken and living amends this one, I'll probably do a lot more writing because I'm going through it a little bit more in depth. Yeah. Wrote everything for the, for the amends part, man, that was so much writing, so much writing. 
Now, if I mm. were to go back and do it now, the way I write now versus the way I wrote back then, and it, so it was still a ton of writing back then, it'd be a ridiculous amount of writing. I would have to order some new refills. <laughs> <laughs> Multiples. There you go. But I do. I did like right now what I was going to say to the individual when I went to him, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, did a little writing with that. More than just a list of the people I need to make amends to is the, how to address it when I went to him. A lot of living amends. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know it was called that until just a couple of weeks old. <laughs> so yeah, a couple right. weeks ago. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't imagine going to making amends and not having it written, you know, because you got to be able to stay on track. And if, if it's not written, you're going to you're gonna go off on a tangent somewhere mm-hmm. and most likely end up making it about you within that amends somewhere. Yeah, so, usually towards the beginning. <laughs> yeah, be honest. It, yeah, it, it don't matter where it falls in, but you'll make it about you. Mm-hmm. You'll throw in a butt. You'll do something. Mm-hmm. Something that we shouldn't do, but if we read it, it allows us to actually get through it and make it about them. You know, making that, reconciling that relationship the way it needs to be reconciled. And then we go into step 10, daily inventory. Woo. That's always fun. We made it. Continued to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. I like step 10. Does within 24 hours count as promptly? <laughs> it depends when you, it depends when yeah, you it depends realize on how that. prompt you are. But it could be because, think about it, how long do you need to cool down sometimes? Sometimes at least 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Then is that promptly? Yeah. Yes. Because you don't want to go with a hardened heart. Right. You want to, you truly want to be sorry for what you did. And if you're still angry about it and you're not calmed down, then you'd be going with the wrong heart. So you want to make sure that you have the right heart when you go. So if it takes you 24 hours, it takes you 24 hours. <laughs> Sometimes we don't realize it until days later that we did something wrong. And it was like, oh, I really screwed the pooch on that one. <laughs> mm-hmm. So then you go make it right as soon as you realize it. it just depends. Right on. Where are we at now? Well, we can't go any further. No, we still got two more steps to finish off. We'll be getting to them. Next week, we got a interview. Next week, we're going to do an interview. We got Dan. Yeah, we got a special guest next week. Then that'd be that, nice. We'll step, we'll jump into 11 and 12 and complete our step series. Yeah. thought we we're going to do one a month, but. I think the way we handled it, I think it worked out really well. Yeah, instead of dragging it all mm-hmm. the whole year. Well, don't work them as fast as we brought them to y'all, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Take well, your time. Agreed. It'd be about six or seven months. I mean, you could get through. Well, this is a step study, six months, right? Yeah. Six to seven months. You could get through the steps six months. Just 90 days is a big rush. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you're going to go through them again, but, I, I mean, I see a benefit and I see a, a detriment in there. <laughs> I see both. Mm. I can see both. I see you guys are grabbing some scripture. Are we going for it? You know, we do it. All right. So I got one. Go ahead. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. That's submit word. That's a good one. I really ain't got one right now. Lamentations 3, 40. Examine Examine your ways and test them. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, examine your ways and test them and return to the Lord. So, yes, without a doubt. That goes back to steps four and five and stuff. When you examine your ways, don't do all the negative. But do the negatives and positives. Because when he says check yourself, he don't talk about just everything bad that's happened in your life. Check your life and the, your past all, both good and bad. Yeah, don't take yourself down the road you don't need to go down. Right. Mm-hmm. Especially if you ain't properly worked step three. <laughs> yeah, make sure you do that. I got another one. Psalms 46, 1 through 3. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Don't conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed, transformed by the renewing, renewing of your mind. Romans Amen. 12, 2. Amen. Or 1. Oh, that's we, have to, we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Otherwise, if we don't change the way we think, we will not change the way we act or behave. Basics to CBT. Yeah, pretty much. CBT? CBT. What's CBT? Cognitive behavior therapy. <sighs> no. Yeah. <laughs> In closing, what you got, D? Hey, right. So it was good to go back and review the steps. If you haven't started working the steps, get to a meeting, find you a sponsor, and start going through it. 
Hey, yeah, we're a Christ-centered program. If you haven't found Christ as your Lord and Savior yet, find that higher power, though. Find what's working best for you that you can actually start surrendering these things to, and you can actually open up your four-step, get even into the steps five and six and letting go and, you know, the seven, and letting go and having them taken away from you. You know, without a doubt, find your spirituality in the, on all this. Find that higher power. Find Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, find Jesus without a find doubt. Jesus. Mm. Jesus. But Jesus as you understood it. No. <laughs> yeah. And only one way to understand Jesus. Mm-hmm. Look, where you're at, where you're at. Just find your higher power, though. Without a doubt. But hopefully to be Jesus. Yeah. If not today, it may be tomorrow. What you got, Mikey? This step series has been so good so far. And, uh, you know, it's cool that it's, you know, coming to an end. And we got some other stuff looking forward to later in the year. Um, I'm glad we had a, a chance to recap where we are and where we're headed. Yeah, uh, and I'll second what Derek said. You know, get get to a meeting. Find uh, find yourself a sponsor. Go in with an open heart, open mind, um, and really give yourself up to Jesus. Yeah, okay? that's to where Jesus. we want to see everybody. Exactly. But if you're not there yet, I don't care. Wherever start, you're at. Start somewhere. We'll love you until you do. Be willing to be vulnerable. Amen. Mm-hmm. There was a good teacher in this room about being vulnerable. I I couldn't have did it. Even being that far into my recovery when he did it, I couldn't have did it the way he did it. Um, be that willing to be that vulnerable with somebody, and you will find the healing and the freedom that you've been longing to find. Oh. Your life will change. So with that, you want to close us? Yeah. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. We're on all podcast platforms. We want to thank our sponsor, Tactile Turn. Make sure you guys go check them out at tactileturn.com. Those of us here at the Awake and Sober podcast. You can write to us at info at awakensober.org. <laughs> there it is. And For all hit of, .org, not .com. I, I almost hit the .com. Info at awakensober.org. .org. Write us. Let us know what you want us to talk about. we got a lot of shows left the rest of the year. For everybody here at Awake and Sober. We'll see you next week. God bless. Peace.